Good afternoon and welcome to the first ever IQ Foil European Championships here in Lake Silverplana in Switzerland. I'm joined with my co-host today, Aaron McIntosh, who is a coach to how many gold medals? Okay. Uh, just two. Just, just two. two. Just two gold medals. He got a bronze medal himself in Sydney Olympics, so he has got all the tactics. But we are starting off with a difference today. We are doing slalom. So yes, we are going to see the PWA world meet the Olympic world or the RSX world, I should say. Uh, and we have got some really interesting races coming up. It's the first time we're going to see this discipline in okay, the Olympic so class uh, ever, I guess. That's right. Um, that, that it's fast, man. it's dynamic, mm -hmm. we're foiling. Uh, we've got the new boys to sort of foiling, the RSX boys. They've uh, switched codes pretty quickly. Um, the PWA guys are here, they've got a few seasons under their belts, foiling. Um, yeah, who's going to come out top? It's going to be exciting. Okay, we're going to cut in straight to race number one. Uh, and we have got a good line up here. Like I say, a mixture of Olympic sailors. Here we go, we're going straight into the racing. Here we go. So this is heat number one already lining okay, up. So we will start again at 10 minutes, at 10 past three. We're going straight in and it was a fair, fair bit of breeze out there. I think we've got in between sort of uh, 12 to 18 knots I heard on the race course as they have already gone over the start line. You can see a few of the guys right on the edge in the middle with that, uh, I don't know what to say, but toilet stance, which is the bum out. Long harness slides and we've already lost. Oh, a couple of riders straight from the off. Three uh, down. God damn. Aaron, have you seen that in RSX racing? No, this is all new, Ben, and it's uh, it's exciting. You know, we've got, got new guys to the fleet okay, and uh, the falling a little bit high and, uh, and riding out. And uh, you pay the price. Yeah, you pay the price. So we've got Sebastian Kirtle in this, the big German, and he looks like he's actually going to go round in first place. Uh, it's going to be hard to pick out the other riders. We've not got the best view here, but we'd expect to see maybe the Brit Tom Squires. He's going to the Olympics on the RSX. He'd be up there, I'd guess, on one of those British flags you can see up there. Um, who okay, cares? We got the Italian. I think uh, Renner was top tip. I think before this race, one of the young kids. Yeah, Renner's out of uh, Lake Garda. New kid uh, on the RSX block, performing really well, and uh, it looks like he's up there in the foiling already. Okay, so uh, we'll have to keep an eye out for them. Who else are we looking for? Hu Yan Tak. I'd expect him. He had a really good performance, but I can't see him up there at the moment. But it's the big German out in front, Sebastian Kirdle. He's done a fair bit of slalom before. Obviously, the PLA boys have the advantage at the moment over the uh, the old RSX guys coming through, especially with the foil. Obviously, uh, PLA the slalom foiling is a new discipline and these guys have been training hard over the winter uh, he's a big fellow as well Sebastian Kirtle there we go that's the first of the Brits 2-6-2 two, two. who's that that's Max Beanham Beanham that's the young fella he's new He's new to the foil I know the Brits have been uh, putting in the hours and uh, doing quite a bit of slalom lately so uh, they're comfy out there um, and Rena looking pretty solid there too. Look at him, he's blazing. Yeah, the young Italian just right behind, but Max Bean, and maybe that's a little bit of a shock. Uh, he's still, uh, actually looking here, a junior. So that means, well, well under six, what's a junior? That's super young. Junior is under 17, so um, yeah. Fair play. He's got a future ahead of him, that's looking sharp. He's a tall fella, isn't he? He's skinny fella, but he's a, he's got a bit of length. He's, if his dad's anything to go on, he's going to be a probably solid slalom racer. But Sebastian Kirtle heading out this qualifying round. Uh, just to explain how it works, uh, we're going to have three different no, two different colours, is that right? We can have uh, men's yellow one, men's yellow two, men's yellow three. Top six from each of those rounds go through to a 18-man final. Uh, and then we have a blue one, two, three, and they go through to a final, and then they have their separate final, so we'll have a couple of equal firsts, a couple of equal seconds in those finals. That's yeah, that's correct. correct, Ben. What it does is uh, the slalom is a short, sharp race, and so it sort of it technically accounts for a half of what a course race would be. So it's a great way that uh, run the slalom for at this stage. Okay, so here we go. We're still coming through this first round. Curdle out in front, but it really is a fight to be in the top six. Uh, if you're not in sixth place, seventh place will miss out, and they will go into a sort of losers final. There will be three stages of finals, so you'll have an A final, a B final, and a C final. Obviously, the A final is the winners final, uh, the B final is like the runners up final, and then the lower down. And obviously, the points are adjusted accordingly. But Sebastian Kirtle already round and clear. It looks like Max Beanham is holding on to second place. Uh, Reina as well in third, and then there's the real fight. Squires is there. Uh, the young Dutchie. I mean. 
he's only a little fella, isn't he? Th Dutch 36? 70 yeah, kilos? He's, like that. he's part of the talent program out of the Netherlands. So uh, we've got a pretty strong uh, yeah, windsurfing, wind foiling program there. So hey, it's great to see these new kids uh, stepping up and, and they're pumped, you know, they're really pumped. They're excited, the adrenaline's pumping and uh, hey, He's going to first run on the board there. Yeah, Max Bean in second place. Good luck there. Squires in fourth. So fifth is the young Dutchie. And then sixth place at the moment looks like it goes to my old racing mate, Maxim. Still going strong. Yeah, some people just never give up. <laughs> um, it's pretty impressive to see. So, uh, yeah, Maxim uh, charging along and, and loving the foil. Uh, he's got a lot of stoke on these days and, uh, and uh, keeping these young guys honest. Okay, so there we go. That is the top six. Uh, Sebastian Curdle, Max Beamham, uh, Ricardo Renner, Tom Squires, Max Castledean and uh, Maxim. Um, I won't go there with the second name. Maxim from Russia. Solid. And we, I think we're already in, are we? Are we already into the second round? So men's yellow two. Uh, we've got, uh, looking at the front there, Thomas Goya, one of the Goya brothers. Uh, he's always up there in the up downwind, but uh, in the slalom, looks like he's had a good start there. And he goes around in first place. Um, who else have we got up there? We've got a Spaniard. What's this? Who's that? Trying to look down. Raymond Pastor's in this, so expect him to be up there. And it is Raymond Pastor from Tarifa right up in the mix uh, we got a French fella as well I'm getting you're gonna have to bear with me that's Titoon by the looks of it 719 so they're looking very good at the start of this race but plenty of uh, to go who's that it's a New Zealand flag out there Aaron no 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 ben, that's uh, that's uh, Steve Allen from Australia uh, another one of the old boys and then still giving it plenty and uh, you know it's, it's fantastic we've got a meeting of the generations we've got a meeting of the classes here and uh, that's the beauty of what the IQ4 class has done. Okay, it's so everyone back together. Yeah, good to see Steve. He's on the edge there, though, in about that cutoff place, which is around sixth place. Six riders will get through to the final. So out in the front, Thomas Goya. Second place looks like Raymond Pastor. And third place is uh, Titoon Lebosca, I think, or something like this. Uh, I'm going to say, I'm going to have to bear with me. I'm going to have to learn these Olympic names. It might take me a while. But the top three look pretty solid. Can't see quite at the moment behind them. Uh, but Thomas Goya looking very comfortable. Raymond is getting reeled in by the French fella, though, as they come into this uh, third mark. What has he got for us? Oh, is this? Oh, there we go. It's a general recall. We oh. didn't hear it over the radio. It looks like it's a general recall. I was thinking there was something going on there. We didn't hear yeah, it that, that's that's the nature of the game, right? General recall is going to slow the fleet up and slow the process up a little bit. So, hey, a little bit frustrating, but uh, we've got to keep it fair. Uh, what happens if you're over, you're out. So uh, you pretty much go to the C final um, and we restart the race again. So real simple. If you've messed up the start, the, there's a chance that you're messing up the other competitors and the cleanest and the fairest way is to uh, start start clean again. So, um, so the name of the game. So if you're used to watching the Peterway racing exactly the same, you have a, a restart, it's a black flag essentially if you're a racer watching the slalom, it's a black flag rule, you're over the line, done. You are done. So it looks to me um, like probably the guys are up there now. I've just heard uh, Pastor might have been uh, maybe over the line early to tune as well. So we'll have to wait for confirmation of that before we restart this men's yellow two. So if you are just joining us, what do you think of having slalom in Olympic racing? It's pretty exciting. Aaron, what, how do you make of it? Well, you know, the Olympic sport's been real traditional. We've been doing windward lures for years and now's the chance that we mix it up. You know, we've We've got a new class, we've got a new sport, and we, and we need to be dynamic. We need so to we need provide an entertainment package for the Olympic Games. The and um, the wind foiling's MP4. doing it. It's, uh, you know, it's fast, it's dynamic. We will, uh, uh, we can race slalom when it's live, of course moment. racing, and then, you know, throwing the marathon in as well. So, uh, later so, in the week let's so that's see. it for anyone who's not been following this olympic discipline the iq foil is now the official olympic class so what have we got what we sort of equipment the are they using well it's pretty simple starboard's uh, put a, a very slick package together it's what they call the iq 95 board uh, 95 centimeters wide max um it's a nine meter sail for the men and an eight meter sail for the woman uh, we have a, a pretty similar standard starboard uh, foil package 900 front wing 225 tail wing um, and it has a tail adjuster so you can tune it for the slalom you can tune it for the course racing and the conditions um, this 
one set of equipment is going to take us right the way through the range, you know, so from six knots uh, right the way to 30 knots. Okay. Um, they also include a fin, but uh, I haven't seen many guys on the fin yet. I think uh, that's all yesterday's tech. I was thinking that. It was so weird. I know this sounds strange, but we've had obviously the Formula 4 last week. Uh, we had uh, yesterday, we had good wind, but it was a weird direction and too unstable to race in. And there was a few guys out there and people go, oh, look at those guys on the fin. And it was like, oh, they're so old. It was like, look at those old school guys. It's on just full, full displacement <laughs> mode, right? We don't displace, we fly. Um, you know, you touch down, it feels slow. So right, I can't so imagine putting are, a fin back in my board, that's yeah, for sure. It's, it's an interesting one, though. So when, in theory, would they use a fin? Would they what? say it's a fin race and everyone has to use a fin? Uh, they haven't really defined that, but what it really is is to give the equipment a full range. So uh, the way I see it, we're going to use the foil the whole time unless we got, you know, huge seas, you know, okay. three, four meter sea. Um, 25, 30 knots when the conditions are pretty nasty. You know, there's a real safety uh, issue in those conditions running big fleets. So, you know, I would be surprised if many people use the fin and I'm, you know, I don't expect the top guys to ever use it. So in theory, if someone, you can use the fin, you can choose to use it. Yeah, the board's been designed and the rig's been designed so you can put the fin in. Um, maybe you're a, you're a smaller sailor, a less experienced sailor, and you still want to go out when it's breezy, put the fin in and you're going to get it through. So the okay, beauty of this class, it's, it's really inspired the next generation. So it's not about the Olympic sailors and it's not about the bed sailors. It's very, very easy equipment to use. Okay. And what you've seen is the RSX sailors have jumped on and adapted really, really quickly. You know, less than 20 hours foiling and they're competitive. Yeah. So that's what Starboard's done. They've produced a fantastic set of gear, Starboard Severn, I should say. And and it's been Gonzalo costa Holvo who's been a part of the whole development program in the class. And, um, wow, the product's superb. Um, here we are, first event. We expect to have a few teething problems, but you know, straight out of the box, the gear works and, yeah. uh, and the sailors pumps. Yeah, and this is early days. This is early days. I mean, this is a proper European competition. The winner here will take the title. That is no doubt about it. Uh, but it's almost experimental at the same time because this is all gearing towards the Olympics and the qualification, which is obviously not happening anything now. Although there will be countries looking at these competitions to gauge who they should be supporting in the early days, I guess. Well, what, what you're seeing right now is you're seeing all these new nations coming in, the Czech teams uh, come in. Um, they've just brought 20 sets of Olympic equipment. They're on the program, they're se okay. serious. The Latvian team, um, they're in. Um, the class is going to boom, it really is, and it's, uh, I'm expecting to see a few weekend warriors out there because they think the equipment's pretty good too. Yeah. They don't need to have Olympic aspirations, but uh, right now we've got a European Championships to fight for. Yeah, it's going to be interesting, and also, as we've seen with all Olympic classes, um, you know, what will be the body shape size? I mean, I come from a Mistral racing background, Aaron does, I mean, he's done everything, but um, I know in that sort of stage it was kind of... Well, it was light. 70 yes, was optimum. 70 kilos, 72 kilos max, 68 light. And, and then we had the RSX, which was a kind of similar weight, but tall. Yeah, I mean, we, we pushed 75. the weight up a little bit. So in the average weight became 74, 76 kilos. And... Um, and then the we got this. Class. And well, then we got this. We don't know. We're seeing big guys going against small guys and all being super competitive. We're, le we're learning. Um, it's pretty impressive what the big guys can do, but uh, just from the first couple of heats, uh, we've seen some smaller guys really competitive too. So yeah. um, it's all about skill set right now. Yeah, all out there. I mean, it might not make a difference because of the displacement and, you know, the foil. Maybe the weight isn't a bigger deal, but we will see, obviously, in certain conditions, people are going to shine through. But I'm super excited. And here we go. I think we are keying out for that other start here. Uh, Men's Yellow 2. Uh, we've got uh, Thomas Goya in this. We've got uh, Nicholas Huja. I used to race with old Nicholas. I think he's won a few things in the in the in his past. Uh, now coaching, I think, doing a bit of the French coaching stuff. Yeah, uh, Nico. Uh, oh, that looked close, Aaron. That looked close. Uh, we'll have to wait and see. Is it another PMS? But no, it seems to be clear. Everyone seems to be going pretty strong. Definitely down that bottom end. Someone has got a good lead can't quite see it you'd expect uh oh that's uh, that's thomas goyard yeah no, he's he's looking s s straight out of the bat there looking really or is it no thomas goyard's coming through now in the middle of the pack uh then we've got uh, i think steve allen in there we've also got uh, the italian is it it's renner again so renner proving uh, that first race he was up there maybe is not a fluke so he's right in there 
Expect to see the Brits, can see a couple of the Union Jacks coming into the mix, into that first race. And here we go, Steve Allen's up there. It's Thomas Goyer in first, Steve Allen second. Then we got Andy Brown from the UK, Renner from Italy, uh, Nicholas Huge from France pumping underneath. Uh, and then we've got 426 from Great Britain. That's James Farley uh, looking a little bit further back at the moment. But look at the Italian pumping his way over the old veteran Steve Allen. He's going, I'm going to have a little bit of a rest here, mate. This is just qualifying. But Steve Allen's got to be careful. He's on the edge there in sixth place. Well, that's the cutoff, right? Six, five, six, seven. You know, that's the way the real fight is. We're going to get the initial, the first jibe, the first big jibe of the race. The leaders step out, and then the real fight begins. And, um, you know, that's what I'm interested in. Who's going to make it and who's not? You know, exactly. That's, that's critical. That is the fight. Six and seventh place. That's where the, the blood, sweat, and all that well he's going to go down but out in the lead Thomas Goya he's not a big fella he's going to the Olympics whenever that happens we'll talk about that in a bit second place looked like Houge uh, Nicholas Houge the Brits up there Andy Brown uh, who else Steve Allen's got? dropped his jive there he's dropped out he's got to look average oh Steve Allen's got to be careful now he's got all the young guns the young whippersnappers uh, going around him out in front though still Thomas Goya um, second place looks like Andy Brown from the UK we got Nicholas Huge in there. We've got Renner from Italy. That's your top four. They're looking pretty safe, but they've still got two jibes to go and two reaches. Um, interesting stuff. I'm really excited to see the close jibing. I'm sure we're going to see a few uh, a few frills and spills today as they come into this inside jibe mark. It's going to be uh, well, going to be Thomas Goya. Thomas Goya leading the pack. Looking very, very comfortable. Andy Brown solid. He's had a solid week last week, and he was top IQ foil class uh, in the, the formula. So he's uh, he's sailing well this week. Nice rounding from Andy Brown in second place. Renner in third. Then we've got the Italian. And oh, is a little bit of a problem behind. Maybe Steve Allen again in the mix. And oh, there's two riders gone down, and the Germans coming through. Who's that? 77. Uh, sensed. Never heard of him. I'm a bit new to some of these guys, so I apologise. Germany 77. Is he going to one we're going to have to look out for? Uh, we've also got, uh, well, Steve Allen's going to have to get a wriggle on here. He's not in the top six at the moment. Um, the German, I think, in about fourth place. Um, Renner, Andy Brown. Oh, it's going to come right down to this last mark. Out in the lead, though, it's definitely Thomas Goya looking super consistent. Uh, the Goya brothers, obviously Nico Goya, won that uh, Formula Foil last week by a country mile. He was looking in really good form. And it's his brother now leading this early uh, qualification round. The breeze looks pretty consistent out there, but every now and again you see a bit of a puff come through and the boards, boards are really whipped up and really canted to win, windward. Um, oh, someone's gone down. And that was Nicholas Huger in the water and someone is swimming. That could be the German. No, the German's still on. And uh, here he comes. Steve Allen is back into the top six. We've lost the Brit. That could be James Farley. He was in a qualifying position. Oh, gutted for the Brit. He's gone down on that outside giant mark. And Steve Allen is going to profit from that. So it's Nicholas Goya who's going to win this qualifying heat. Uh, looking very smooth. Yeah, he's going to cross the line in first place. So there we go. First, the Frenchman. Second place, I think we've got Andy Brown from the UK who's not on your screens. This is sixth place, Steve Allen, uh, we're looking at. So he's had a real, we had a good race there, has he? He won't be happy with that. But what he will be happy is he's qualified. Uh, we're not seeing the in-between ones. But from what I'm hearing over the radio, Renner in third, uh, sensed. Uh, looks like he's going to get to fourth place. Huge is going to take fifth, and it is going to be the veteran Steve Allen. Who uh, can I call him a veteran? Is he a veteran? Is that allowed? Oh, he's definitely a veteran. He? He's, a, he's compared to the young he, kids. He'd be touching master or grandmaster <laughs> soon. So uh, you know, this is a class for everybody, yeah. and um, you know, and and foiling for life, windsurfing yeah. for life, and uh, you know. Maybe a little midlife crisis along the way kind of keeps you in the sport, you know. Well, uh, Steve Allen won the Formula Foil last year. I know yeah, he beat okay, Matt Check so in a couple of close okay. battles. So, Steve Allen, yeah. ultimate racer, is still going. We're going straight up to men's yellow, okay, number okay. three. Uh, we've got two we got in this. We've got the big gun, Nicholas Goya. Expect to see him right up there. Amado Vries fights in this. We've got Bruno Martini. Uh, Elia Colombo, the local Swiss rider, really on it. Uh, Finn Hawkins, the real young uh, Brit, uh, one of the juniors here. Who else have we got? We got Joao Gomez from Israel. He's a youth world champion, one of one of the dominant guys in the youth class and uh, in the RSX. So uh, 
Yes, Real is late to take on the foiling program, but uh, certainly here in force this week. Yeah. Spanish up there, who's that? Let's have a quick look down the list. Uh, Martinez, Fernando, uh, keep your eye on him. We've got Denmark 75, one of the Danes. They've got a very strong uh, racing back. And Jepsen, that is from Denmark, and he is right in the mix coming into the first mark. But uh, I think round in first, surely it's got to be Nicola Goya. I think it is, yeah. Goya round in first. Uh, I think Amado Vrusvike is up there. Jepsen's up there. Fernando. Um, yeah, Fernando's up there from Spain. It's really tight for that sixth serve place. Obviously, sixth place goes through to the final. Um, and it's an 18-man final. So super close racing, but Nicolas Goya right out in the lead. Absolutely wiped the floor with the Formula Foil last week. But obviously, he was on his own gear there. He was on the Phantom Foil, Phantom Board, Phantom Sail. This week, he's on the Olympic gear. And still, by the looks of it, showing he knows what he's doing uh, on sort of gear that he's probably not that familiar with. So Nicolas Goya rounding first. Second place, it looks like, looks like Aaron McIntosh. <laughs> Well, it could be, but it's not. Uh, it's my gear. Amara Vesrak uh, uh, used my gear this weekend, so uh, got another guy in the in the front from the PDA, PWA and in the in the mix. Uh, oh, right there you see. go. I think that's is, is that the really uh, young kid you were talking about? Yeah, uh, Omar's uh, looking good and, and always pushing hard. He's super close rated. I just saw the young Finn Hawkins there uh, battling it out, and he is super close for a qualifying position. And we're back up. Uh, looks like Amado Vrusvike we've got on camera right now, sitting in second place. Out in front, uh, Nicolas Goya from France. These are the two you'd expect to see qualifying through this early round. Very used to foil slalom. Obviously, Nicolas Goya was the Peter A foil champion last year, so uh, right up in the mix and Nicholas Goya already round Amado Vrieswijk in second place I think it could be Jepsen in third yes it is the Dane looking really good then we've got the Italian Bruno Martini followed by Colombo from Switzerland who's in sixth place at the moment it's the Spanish rider fighting out with oh with the Israeli not his best job but still gets away and get a nice bit of acceleration with Finn Hawkins right behind him it's going to come down to the wire oh someone's gone down on the job mark they're kind of out of that top six but they're still fighting hard for the minor places obviously we've got three different finals so you know it's not that if you're not in the top six you need to be in the top 12 or seventh to 12th will get into the b final i guess yeah that's correct you know the whole idea of this format is that we've got engaged racing right the way through you know so uh you get knocked out in the first round you still got another chance and uh and that's the way the sport needs to be um it's all about the sailors right here and um well the excitement and the pump that's got going on in the fleet um everybody wants to race everybody wants to send it and uh and they're learning real fast. Well, they're all coming around clean at the moment. Looks like Jepsen in fourth, fifth place is Colombo, who's in sixth place. That's Fernando, a good job. Finn Hawkins right behind him, and Omar the Israeli. It's gonna come down to a drag race on this finish uh, with the advantage at the moment to the Spanish rider, Fernando. Out in front though, there's only one winner in this qualifying heat, and uh, Nicolas Goya kicks off his Olympic campaign at the Europeans with a win in the first uh, qualifier. Second place from uh, Bonaire would have been Amado Vrieswijk, not on your cameras at the moment. This is a bit further down the pack, actually. Not in the top six. Hopefully we can get back to that top six fight. There we go. We're just nipping back. That's Finn Hawkins, I think. He must be close to sixth place. But I'm not sure we're going to see the finishes. We might have to just wait for the results. And we're going, looks like we're going straight up. So apologies for that. Okay, we're just hearing over the radio. Nicholas Goya first. Abado Vrieswijk second. Jepsen third. Martini fourth. Colombo fifth and it was Fernando that got that sixth place so Finn Hawkins from the UK missing out as we go straight up what are we going into now is this the this is the ladies looks a little different sales look smaller could be the ladies I think we are sorry I'm just looking down at my score sheet yes it says at the top heat number four ladies there we go the women and uh, then we've got uh, is that Esther de Goos in the uh, beginning uh, you've got uh, Lillian de Goos the Dutch uh, world champion RSX world champion and Sarah Winnick is there also uh, a RSX uh, sailor from the Netherlands so uh, she's uh, new to the IQ4 class and uh, she's got a big grin on her face and doing real well uh, early start yeah I've got to say I've seen the grins on these sailors faces they're loving the slalom I've seen the just it's just a change of expression oh lovely jibe out in the front you know the, the great thing is the class is real new and everybody's adapted and taken it on really quickly and and you know, that's the stoke we love that's what we're excited about 
and uh, they come through the finish line in a grin so, from yeah, ear to ear. It's, a, it's a beautiful sight yeah. and uh, the class is going great. There's some massive adrenaline out there, isn't it? You know, slalom racing yeah. does make the adrenaline pump. It is yeah, tense, yeah, 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 tense yeah, yeah, stuff. You're starting on a reach on a foil that is designed for upwind, downwind, I guess. It's, I mean, it's, it's, it's meant for everything, but I guess it's a bit lifty. It's, uh, <laughs> it's living on the edge, I'll tell you that. I know from experience and, um, um, you know, I know my underwear are not as clean as they were at the start of the day. So, um, impressive what these ladies are up to uh, already and uh, you know, nice to see the girls uh, pushing by. So, it looks like... Uh, Oh, oh, Sarah Whitaker is out in the lead, but not the best jibe. And it looks like uh, Spanish riders come through. Is that Alibao? Couldn't quite see who it is. I can see Lillian de Goos, uh already through. We've got uh, one of the Israeli girls up there as well. Actually, a couple of the Israelis in this race. I'm just going to try and pull up, make sure we can uh, give them a bit of justice here get their names i'm going to say it's going to take me a bit of time to get uh, used to the names i'm saying that is that that's blanca out in the front yeah it is blanca alabao yes blanca alabao out in the front she's been getting a few hot tips off uh mateo yakino i heard well, uh, on and off the water, which is a great thing. <laughs> That's how it is. So Blanca Alabao leading the way, looking like she's got some really good speed out there. Last time we looked, it was Sarah Winnicus from the Netherlands. Netherlands 33 in second place. Um, and yep, yeah, still the same. So Blanca Alabao. Then we've got, is that uh, Sarah? That's, that's Lillian, no, Lillian de Goos. De Goos. Then we've got uh, Winnicus. Then we've got uh, the Israeli, which is uh, Gazit. Gazit from Israel. The Israelis were uh, late adopters to the foil class and uh, they're here in force and especially in the females and uh, they've had a strong program the RSX and another another country that's really uh, taken it on and uh, you know a little skeptical to start with about the foiling but hey the grins tell a thousand words. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So we've got two, uh, is, well, we've got a few Israeli riders in this but look out for Morris Israel 7 and uh, Gazit uh, Israel 83. Like I say, it's all new for me, so I'm learning as we go along. So you'll have to excuse me not knowing uh, all the riders uh, straight away, but I'm sure we'll get down to it. But at the moment, it's Blanca Alabao leading this first qualifying one, and this will go straight into the final. Um, so let's have a look. Now she gets on here. This is the last jibe mark coming up. Hang on a minute. She's gone the wrong way. Blanca Alabao has gone the wrong way. Oh, this could be a disaster. You can see the white mark. And then the other girls have actually going round the other mark first. So Blanca Alabao is in a bit of trouble here. Oh, this is a disaster for the Spanish rider. But she might be saved because look at the rest of the fleet. They are not going round the first mark. Oh, this is carnage. How does this get sorted out? Uh, real simple. Yeah, read the sailing instructions and check out the course. The guys have been doing it for a couple of heats already. So... Uh, you know, she's got to be spitting tacks right now. That's uh, that's disappointing. Well, she, well, she's tacked round. If there's enough riders that don't go round the first mark, she will be the first back up to the first mark. Is she in? She doesn't look like she's... No, that wasn't Blank Alabao, was it? That's Marina Alabao. I apologise. Blank Alabao has come through. Marina Alabao was the one leading, has gone the wrong way. She is out. Apologies. Oh, no. That's a disaster. Wow. That is a disaster. You know, first day of competition, we've been sitting around for two days, and uh, and all of a sudden uh, the, the regatta turns on, and, and we're up for it. And Oh, first, first blood, first oh, mistake. that's got to hurt, hasn't it? That's going to hurt at the end of the week, especially with the lack of racing the last two days. So, Kicking uh, off the competition, Marina Alabao will get a DNF for this result. This is big, big news in the women's fleet. That is not how you want to kick off the campaign. Um, just hearing through the radio, the results coming through. Lillian de Goos will win it. Uh, Sarah Winnicus uh, obviously went the right way. Has she only you've been coaching a little bit? Oh, a few <laughs> tips here and there. <laughs> uh, we got Maya Morris from Israel. Uh, Nama Gazit, uh, Gazit from Israel goes through. Uh, Watson goes through from the UK. Blanca Alabao will also qualify. Uh, and we'll Okay, we're already straight into heat number five. Obviously, with that mistake, we're already at the first mark. Um, we've got Hella 
uh, Helena annoys me. And if anyone was watching the form in the foil last week, you'll know how fast she was. She dominated that event, uh, pretty much like uh, Nico Goya did in the men's fleet. And that looks like a French flag out in the front. I'll get back to you in a minute, but it looks like Noisman might be leading um, hung Hungary in second. So Sarah. Uh, She's come from the RSX class and obviously another one that's taken on the, the foiling uh, uh, really quickly uh, and, and straight to the front of the pack. That's really impressive. So she's straight up there. We've also got the, another Israeli girl, um, Pelagil. My pronunciation on some of these names, I'm going to have to go home and work on this. There's a lot of work to do. I know, I know. Uh, we've got uh, Lipkinska. She was going well last week. Uh, Panaz Panazina. Yeah, if he sounds like there's a bit of wind on the mic, that's just coming from our mics. I think you guys at home should be good. Um, I'm going to say we'll have to get up to speed here, but obviously with that um, problem with the last race, all the women are hanging around right outside us at the moment and covering the cameras because they're all trying to find out who actually made it through to the final. So this might be, um, well, we're having a few teething problems here. Um, it looks like the Hungarian going well. Sarah, uh, we've all forgot. Uh, Amber Papazina. My pronunciation is so bad. Uh, Oppendahl looking good. Lena Erdl's in this. Uh, sailing under a German sail yeah, number, so Germany 33. Yeah. Uh, look out for her. Marianne Coutier. Uh, Coutier, yeah. She should be up there. Expect her to be uh, in the mix. So tricky to pull all these numbers out. Like I say, I'm so used to the PWA, it's uh, it's going to take me a while to learn the sale numbers. So definitely apologies. And that is the finish. So we're already finished. So Helen Noisman has already finished second place uh, with the Hungarian rider. So they're coming in quick and fast here. The Israeli uh, looks like uh, Peleg, Peleg, Peleg. Well, we'll have to check the results as they go through to that women's final. Apologies, Lena Erdl going through. Looks like she's going to qualify as well. And we're going to go back into the men's competition. And we're going into the second set of heat. So this is men's blue. And we are already up and running, but it looks like we've got a general recall. Oh, it's hectic. It's hectic. Uh, we've got your man in this one, Kieran Badlow. So he should probably be up there in this, you'd expect. Well, I know Kieran Badlow, he pushes pretty hard all the time. So uh, that's a general recall, uh, you know, fingers crossed there. Um, you know, it's the nature of the game. It's time on distance and uh, you want to hit the start line, bang on at 100% speed. And that's when these front guys are going to step out into the lead really quickly. If you're a second off, two seconds off, you're, you're second row. You're going to be following in following in the jibes and the dirty air that hurts that hurts and, and you'll be fighting for the for the minor placings with that starts so yeah we've already got some big names in this Mateo Yakino don't get much bigger than that apart from probably Pierre Mortifon but at the moment Pierre Mortifon Antoine Albo Mateo Yakino have dominated Peter A. Slalom uh, for a couple of years now they have been a dominant force he's in this uh, Alexander Kuzan who's been killing it in the slalom and the course racing he's going to be a proper force Steve Van Brockhoven um, and then we've got like I would say quite a lot of the young uh, the young RSX hopefuls or let's say senior riders in the RSX um, and obviously Kieran Badlow but we have just heard Aaron it's bad news mate um, oh, he's, he's over he's, oh, you knew I knew you knew well you know the guy's keen right he pushes and uh, and the margin for error is there well, well there is no margin for error and uh, uh, early shower for Kieran. Well, all relegated to uh, the third, third uh, final. Okay, so we'll wait for the restart of that. A few comments coming in on the YouTube channel. Quite a lot. Is the track track? The track track is online, so you'll have to check it out. Track. Just put track track into Google, and you will find it. Okay. Apparently, we're not using it for the slalom, but uh, so you can't use that. Apologies. Well, I think the track track is, uh, is much better in course racing. You know, this is drag racing, straight lines. So uh, what you see is what you get. You're not seeing the, the tactical uh, sort of consideration that happens in, uh, you know, your upwind, downwind racing. So uh, 
but you know it's something that's going to be uh, implemented for the future well, there we go a lot of people saying um, talking about foil versus fin I think that was from our conversation earlier um, it's well, interesting uh, well there is no foil versus fin right now it's all foil yeah I mean the fin has definitely got its place for me I have to say I'm a big uh, fin fan uh, especially high wind slalom um, but like I said in the Olympic discipline you have to cover so much with one set of kit that's kind of the, the the criteria they give you you've got to produce one set of kit literally to do everything upwind downwind slalom light winds high winds and the foil really does tick the boxes it has and and this is very going to be very very similar to what we had in the rsx you know we couldn't sail the rsx in more than 18 knots and by the end we're sailing in 35 knots and uh uh, the sailor is going to learn to understand the gear, manipulate the gear, uh, understand the steadings and, and obviously uh, do a whole lot of training so um, that ability is going to get you around the racetrack. Yeah, for sure. So we're still waiting for the restart of this round. Ben, what do you think? The venue. The venue is absolutely stunning here. You know, it, it's, it's my first time in Silver Plana and uh, I'm blown away. The organisation, the event, uh, and well, 1700 metres, you feel the altitude? I'm feeling it, I'll tell you what, a couple of beers uh, definitely hits you harder than lower down. <laughs> yeah, a couple of beers and a few stairs uh, to get home here the nice, uh, makes a challenge. <laughs> no, but I tell you what, if you've never been here to Silver Planet, you will not understand how breathtaking it is. I mean, I've not spent much time in the mountains, I won't lie, so it's always new for me, but when I came last year for the first time, I was literally blown away. You've got the mountains with snow on it up there, it's sunny, the trees, the lake. I mean, I'm a big lake fan. I grew up on a lake, I won't lie to you. So I'm kind of into the lake sailing. Not everyone is, but I like it, especially with the tactics, with the wind shift, the wind bends, and the up-down racing we've seen, and now we're seeing the slalom. I'm loving it. Well, the interesting thing is uh, it's just what the wind does at higher altitude, and it's a lot thinner, and, and what we saw during the Formula Foils, we saw guys using 11 metres and, and you can only get away with an 11 metre sail and, and those sort of conditions, 12 to 14 knots in the thin air up here and that's something really different for the sailors to kind of take into. So uh, the Formula Foil allows that sort of equipment in the rules um, and we saw a few sailors out there uh, with the 11s pushing it and wow, super fast, especially downwind and uh, especially in the marathon the other day, the 43rd Ingerton Marathon. This place got a bit of windsurf history. It's got a bit of windsurf history. I think it might some, I mean I hear this a lot of places but is it the longest serving windsurfing race? But I have heard that from a few Howdy. different organisers but 43 years. Well that's impressive and, uh, and all the legends and all the heroes have been here, the Duncan Becks and the yeah, Nashes and the Antonio Bowes. Um, yeah very very cool and uh and you know this regatta is going from strength to strength uh, and world championships and european championships back to back next week the swiss championships yeah um it's a summer of foiling it's got a big history and i've got to say foiling up here in switzerland is going off they have embraced the foil obviously it's higher up the wind is a little bit less dense so the foil just fits oh. perfectly with those breezes they get those sort of uh, thermal breezes well that's exactly it. it's not just the race foils it's the, it's the wing foils and uh and we're seeing a lot of free foilers out here and uh and Reddy Kulo, um one of the foil stylers his home here um, saw a lot of him uh, in the last couple of days. Pretty impressive what these guys are doing. He's going off, that's for sure. It looks like they might be lining up. Uh, this is the restart we just heard. It is Kieran Badlow and Rob York, uh, I think. Um, no, I don't know, see, let's have a look. We'll wait. Well, hopefully we'll get this one uh, up and going. we go we're lining up someone down that pin end is uh, why that was so close but it looks like they've got away it looks like they've got away there wasn't much in it it looks like maybe Matteo Yukino with an absolutely pinging start and that is Jazunas from Lithuania as well down there and um, also we've got uh, Alexander Kuzan we've got uh, a couple of Belgian riders in this so Stephen van Brockhoven uh, and Thomas uh, Brauk yeah, Thomas Brauch right in the mix. 
It looks like it is a clean start. Yeah, Rob York and Kieran Badlow already disqualified for being over the line okay. early. Uh, we are going straight into it. So it's going to be the Italian uh, vice world champion, Matteo Yakino, rounding first. Second place, Jasunas. Oh, not the best job. He's going to get overtaken by uh, Alexander Kuzan in second place. And someone's gone down on the mark. I don't know who that was, but they were in a kind of semi-qualifying position. Not anymore. Not anymore. A few Dutchies uh, getting a bit tied up there. Look at the lead already from Matteo uh, Mateo Iacchino. I mean, he is going to be one of the favourites for the slalom here, surely. Well, no surprises there. The guy's uh, is a uh, you know, vice world champion last year and has taken on the foiling and... Um, yeah, big, strong, and, and he knows how to slalom race. There's no doubt about that. Look at his form right there. Clean jives, efficient. Solid as a rock from uh, Matteo Iacchino. Second place, Alexander Kuzan from France. Oh, Jazanas! I think that's Jazanas who's just gone down, and that is not a good place. And look how tight the racing is. He has literally gone from hero to zero right on that jive mark, and he is in serious trouble. There's no way he's coming back from that. Top six qualified, like I told you, you can't afford mistakes at this level. He is literally looking up going, I'm done. He's not foiling. Everyone is just pulling away from him at Mac 10. The difference between stopped and foiling is huge. Oh, I just heard the number yesterday. Uh, it's um, nine meters a second. <laughs> it doesn't take long to be off the back. Yeah, that's an interesting fact. I mean, maybe you all know this, but uh, if you're going 20 knots, that's uh, 10 meters per second. You basically half it roughly to work it out. So 20 knots, 10 meters a second. I mean, sheesh. Well, there you go, no margin for error. Um, you know, clean jibes, efficient, fast, pumping, keeping planing, keeping foiling. Um, and protecting the air behind you, you know, because you got the guy coming in through, attacking from behind. So, uh, got a know, good, good jibe in coming on there from the boys. You know, to be honest, it's pretty damn good. And, and what we're going to see is the level's going to go through the roof. We're going to see perfection with this class. And, and that happens with any Olympic class. The hours that these guys put in, you know, these guys are sailing 200, 220 days a year, um, three, four hours a day. Plus, what they do in the gym. Um, yeah, there's a lot of stake. This is the tip of the iceberg. This is just the start. This is just the start. Matteo Iacchino rounding first. Alexander Kuzan, it looks like, in second place still. Uh, I think we've got maybe the Belgium, Stephen Van Brockhoven up in the mix. And then we've got a couple of Frenchies. I'm going to have to find him out. Yep, it is Stephen Van Brockhoven in third. And then as long as these guys make their jibes, this looks like um, Tom Arnu must be up there, I would guess. Uh, Bastien Houssin. Uh, in the mix as well the question is who will get sixth place will it be the local Swiss rider Matteo Benz he's on the edge isn't he he is on the edge of making this I'm sure there'll be a big cheer from the crowd if he makes it but out in the lead there's only one winner of this uh, early qualifying round I say early qualifying round this is straight into the final top six uh, Matteo Iacchino wins his first qualifier second place um, is Alexander Kuzan there he is sailing under a different sail number here France 56 um, and then we've got uh, Stephen Van Brockhoven you saw him in the background and I think this is one of the first French riders I oh, know he was further back and uh, we're just missing all them I'm gonna have to wait for them to tell me over the radio who has qualified okay, so sounds like it was third Stephen Van Brockhoven uh, fourth place Sebastian Hussain uh, then we have uh, Tom Arnu in fifth and it was Matteo Benz, the Swiss rider, taking that all-important sixth spot. Mate, Oof, right. <laughs> Ooh, it's intense, it. right? It's the guys, intense. the heats are coming thick and fast. The sailors are rolling through and a lot of new names out there, Ben. You know, and a few tongue twisters too, right? There's a lot of tongue twisters. Anyone who's heard my commentary before know I'm not the best at pronunciation of names. So you're going to have to bear with me. I'm going to have to pull up some nicknames. Um, I'm sure there's a few nicknames going around. Hey, Ben, well, we've heard a lot of you, uh, heard a lot about you in the PWA circuit, and you certainly uh, uh, put the, the face of tea or put the voice there at the PWA windfoiling, uh, windsurfing program there, and it's great to have you a part of the whole windfoiling. Hey, and it is the first event of the season. It's on, it's on, man, it's on. And what I'm loving, I've got to say, I'm loving the PWA world meets the Olympic world. Look at that shot there, isn't that a beautiful shot there? Look at the colours, the flags, and the Nash. 
the national flags there. And, and you know what, Aaron? Let's see, you see that, you see a beautiful shot. Me as a commentator, I see that and I think, oh my God, they've all got the same color sail. I am waiting for the day where maybe they're on different color sails, just to help me out. <laughs> well, any, anything to help the commentary, yeah. Um, you, the voice of uh, Win Foiling this week, and um, I'm stoked to have you here, Ben. No, it's good. Like I said, I, I'm loving the fact that we now get to see the PWA, you know, household names of, you know, even Antoine Albo could join this class. Let's not, anyway, there's no rules to who can join and who can't rule. The only thing is you have to use that equipment. That's as simple as that, you know, if uh, you're a Neil Pride rider, you've got to kind of leave the gear at home and step on the, the Olympic one design equipment. And, um, and let's not just focus on the Olympics. This equipment works for everybody. Um, I know back in New Zealand, um, our local fleet, most of them are going to sail the IQ gear. It's real simple, it's easy, it works, and uh, especially in the junior and youth program, um, you know, that's where they're going. We've got a complete pathway right now. Yeah, I think that's, that's the cool thing about it, and I think I, I really see it happening. I'm, I'm interested to see what happens because I know when this, this class was chosen, there was talk of you know other sail manufacturers building the same sail. I don't know how that's ever going to work, but there is talk of that. The boards as well being rebranded as other boards, so in theory people can have sponsors. Is, is, that, is that still uh, the go? Uh, there is still talk of that. Um, they they talk about the whiteboard, um, so country flags potentially, and uh, another branding as well. So uh, it allows another manufacturer to uh, to produce the Olympic uh, Olympic board. There's very strict uh, you know criteria and, and dimensions that this board has to be produced at. And it is one design, um, and you know, it's going to work. What it does, it really ticks the boxes with the anti monopoly and the Fran, European friend. Uh, um, rules and legal legal rules and regulations, regulations. there you, so, get, you got it there mate you got it that's easy for okay. you to say <laughs> yeah well there we go we're still waiting for the restart of this race but we will be getting straight back into it very soon like i say it's early days for me in this class and definitely uh, i mean for aaron and everybody this is new for literally everybody the competitors the organizers we're all finding our feet with the whole thing well it was november last year that world sailing announced that the IQ foil class was going to be the Olympic class and, and and here we are nine ten months later and you know everything's been held up with this COVID-19 and coronavirus but well the entry for the fleet size here 150 straight off the bat I think everybody's been itching to get it back on the water yeah I know that and you can only see it getting bigger I mean there's I the only thing I think is there's probably going to have to be a qualifying tour to get on the tour almost it's it seems that big well we we look at it we had the the exhibition event event last week in St Moritz there um that was 12 of the best sailors uh, some, a couple of the uh, the RSX sailors and the PWA sailors um we're going to have exhibition events uh, there's going to be a world cup series there may be grade 1 grade 2 um how long does an event need to be well I think 2 days of racing action packed racing super sunday series um, that's pretty exciting. Yeah. Uh, we can deliver a, a, specta a spectacle to the, the locals and uh, we can really deliver something special to the athletes. Um, I can't wait for the marathon. I'm, I'm into it. I love, I mean, we've had, we've had good conversations before about it. Obviously, you've got a medal in Sydney, but Sydney Harbour is probably one of my favourite places to race. It's so shifty. There's wind bends. There's there's everything to throw in a good, as I call it, a yacht race. But it, there's a lot of tactics and stuff going on there. Well, that's just it. You know, we're sailing one design equipment and it comes down to sailor ability and who can win the yacht race. Who starts better, who, who judges the shifts and, and the conditions uh, and especially on, on a harbour like Sydney Harbour with the geography of the land. It's a pretty special place to, to sail. Yeah. So, uh, I'm, I'm, like I said, I'm excited where this is going, where they're going to end up. Obviously, you're going to be going to all the Olympic uh, qualifying events. I guess Medeblik, is that still on? Hiers? And is, is that the still the trailer? Yeah, there's a, a little bit of restructuring going at, at the top. And, um, oh, uh, we've got a restart here going. Okay, here we go. Straight in. Uh, this should be a men's blue number two. Uh, we've got uh, Mateus Isaac in this, the Brazilian. He's a top slalom sailor on the foil. I did sit some stuff with him in Portugal and he was absolutely killing it. Uh, we've already had one PMS here. It looks like, um, was it Sam Seals? I heard might have been over the line early, so we've already lost one of the Brits. You can see Mateus Isaac with that Brazilian flag, very easy to spot. Matchet Rakowski right up in the lead, um, looking pretty solid. 
Who else have we got? We've yeah, got uh, Dutch Rider. Did someone just go down uh, then? Uh, Vin Garden. Yeah, Vin yeah, new kid on the block. Uh, you know, one of our smaller guys. And uh, well, hey, this is what this is all about—the next generation, right? Yeah, we got Martin Jovi uh, in this as well. France number nine, the Hungarian mate. We've got a fair few different ones. Let's have a look at this first mark going round in first. I think it's Matt Chevrakovsky, Mateus Isaac. Oh man, it's so close there. A lot of French riders got the Israeli in there. No crashes though. Guys are keeping it nice and smooth. Clean, don't hold your breath. Yeah, you can't in this class but definitely out in the lead Matea, uh, sorry, Maciek Rakowski from Poland, he was looking good in the Formula Foil, looking solid, um, Mateus Isaac from Brazil in second place got to work out third and fourth places at the moment, we do have the Brit in this, uh, Bloodworth he's been looking pretty good yeah, Maciek Rakowski around this uh, outside jive mark first still, then we got Mateus Isaac Oh, I'm struggling to pick him out. Is that an Italian? Looks like it could be. That could be Danielle uh, Silk. Yeah, I think it is. And then we've got Bloodworth. And then we've got another Polish rider. Fermanski. Fermanski, yeah. yeah Fermanski in fifth. Who's going to get the sixth place? Sixth place is really up for grabs between Vingarden and Jovi. So that's going to be a close one. We'll have to watch that battle as they come into this last mark. Action is happening all over the course. Definitely Maciek Rakowski is going to win it. Oh, hang on a minute. They don't look to be going the right angle. It's not another... No, it's still going. I'm just checking there. Maciek Rakowski still in the lead. He knows um, what he's doing. He knows he's done this game once, once or twice before. He, he sure has. Uh, Mateo Saiz that we saw there in second place. There he is. Third place, the Italian. Then we got Bloodworth from the UK, followed by... Uh, that's the other Polish rider. And France number nine. OK, let's have a quick look. So, yeah, Jovi. We've got uh, Fermanski, Bloodworth and uh, Schlick from uh, Italy. I don't, bet you don't pronounce it like that. That was like a German pronunciation. It's probably some very sexy way of pronouncing it, which I don't do. Hey, we're in Switzerland here. They're speaking a lot of a German and speaking a lot of Italian. There's even a little bit of French further down the road. So, uh, what? you know, I think you're doing all right, pal. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to throw it in there. It looks like it's pretty solid at the moment from the PWA regulars, uh, Rakowski and Isaac leading the way at the moment. Matt Cech's done a fair bit of foil slalom. I know he won the PWA event over in Croatia this year. The only PWA to happen so far, but not a full PWA event. Mateus Isaac from Brazil, like I said, he was over with me in Portugal and he looked in fine form in the slalom. Uh, then we've got the Italian uh, Silk and we've got Bloodworth. Uh, we've got uh, Fermanski. And then who's going to take the sixth spot? That's where it really is up for grabs. Uh, Vingarden and uh, Jovi. Cohen maybe from Israel, so pretty close for the sixth spot. Matchek looking pretty comfortable. Mateus Isaac, in fact, they all look pretty comfortable. Although Jose in fifth got the wobble on. Uh, Vingarden look. Uh, Oh, sorry, no, Fermanski looked like he got the wall. Oh, hello. There's a fight here. Is this for it? This is for it, isn't it? They're coming through. This oh, is a, a bit of a challenge going on. To load there. Look at the French, oh, French to load. He's coming through thick and fast. Jovi. Where has he gone? We've chased the angle, have we? No. Oh, I lost oh. track of that, but Jovi looked like he was coming through. I think he made it through. Yeah, he was number six. Oh, Jovi in sixth place. Fermanski in fifth. Bloodworth in fourth. Uh, sick in uh, third place second Isaac and first Rakowski alright last of the men's qualifiers coming up next uh, we've got uh, Machinsky used to race with old Machinsky back in the day Rhode Island Yacht Club 94, 95, 96 I think it was oh, I've got a, a fair bit of history with that guy there won a few world championships Mistral RSX and uh, and last week uh, second in the Formula 4 Worlds and he is I've got to say he's a coach he's the Polish coach they didn't allow coach boats at this event so he said well I'm going to race I'm not going to sit on the beach he raced got second oh, I don't think he's been doing too much coaching lately I think he's been spending a lot of time on the water I think you know soup up and play like that you know? is that really fair I mean it's well, not the rest of us coaches that's for sure yeah I mean it's pretty impressive though because it has like his students I don't know what you call them but uh, his protégés his protégés I mean they got to look up to him and go yeah okay we've got to 
listen to this fella. He knows what he's on about. Yeah, you've got to lead by example, you know. You can't just say, back in my day, no, this is how we do it today. That's what I do. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I do. I'm just clinging on to the past as. What do they say? Do as I say, not as I do it? Well, I think it's quite the reverse there. <laughs> All right, uh, what have we got going on here? We've got uh, Men's Blue 3, so we should have uh, Mikhail Polak from Poland. Uh, we've got Toma Vadmon. We've got uh, Scaliola, one of the Italian young guns. Um, PWA superstar young guy coming up. We've got Matthew Barton from the UK. Uh, uh, Christian Jutzen from Denmark. So they got a solid crew over there in Denmark. We've got Michinski from Poland, as I mentioned before. Uh, Metstra. Metst Adrian. Adrian Metstra, he's an RX-6 sailor. Um, obviously, he's been doing a bit of training with uh, as, uh, Thomas Goyard in the RX-6. Um, you know, Piotr Minsker as well, uh, another Polish RX-6 sailor. Uh, also going to the games uh, in Tokyo 2021. Um, Jo Swink. Another Netherlands guy, another young kid on the block. So oh. plenty of interest here, they're lining up now. See if we can try and pick them out. Who is where? You've got to be on the start line as we talked about before in this slalom. Someone's gone early. Well, let's, uh, he looked pretty confident though. There was no hesitation. And I, my guess in that would be uh, Machinsky. No, it looks like he's, yes, that's yeah, Machinsky. 126, pole 126, famous in my head, 126. Uh, from Poland, so Maczynski out in the lead. Look at the Danish rider up this top end, flying down. That's Jensen. Uh, looks like he's got a fair bit of speed coming through. Uh, we've got one of the Brits up there as well. Um, who is that? That's probably Matthew Barton. He, I think, he actually won the IQ foil category. Actually, it was Mark Matthew Barton because there's a few people wasn't going to call that, and he came through really strong. So the Brit looking in about fourth place at the moment. So uh, Maczynski in first, second place is Menst. Then we've got Jotson. Uh, then it is uh, Barton. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Carnage at the mark. Carnage. Oh, he's One all down, gone two down. down. Three down. And everybody around the outside. Oh, no. That looked nasty. Scaliola might have been involved in that crash, I have a feeling. It looked pretty nasty. That's the problem when these foils go down. How do you avoid the, oh, the, the oh. carnage? Well, who's this? Is Jutsen leading? Or have I missed the first two? Maybe we missed the first two. Jutsen looking good from Denmark, though. No, it's still uh, Minchin Minchinski in first place. Second place. A couple of wide jives going on there. Minst. Then we've got Jutsen, yeah, in third place. Oh, someone's gone down again. No, that, I think that was Scaliola went down. I saw an Italian sale number, and that is bad news for the young Italian. He'd be expected to qualify a real good uh, up there from, uh, who was that? There's was Piotr Minska. He went yeah, down, Minsk. he popped up real quick. Because Minska, right he sort of bounced off the wall there, didn't he? <laughs> That's what you've got to do in this foil racing. You can't afford, as you said, probably going at 20 to 25 knots out there, which is between 10 and 12 metres per second. I mean, that's quick. Okay, Putting into kilometres an hour, that's, uh, that's 45 to 48 kilometres an hour. So, uh, yeah, you know what it's like? Stick your head out the car window at that speed. Yeah, you don't want to get run over, that's for sure. <laughs> that's for sure. So, Maczynski, the Polish rider, out in front, second place. Menstra, then we've got uh, Jutzen, and then we've got the French riders, 272, who's that? Piana's that? No. I'm struggling. I'm struggling, boys, I'm struggling. I can't find him. Uh, well, we'll have to come back to him in a minute. I've lost him. I know Pole 126 is out in the lead, though. Second place is Adrian Minstra. You definitely don't say it like that. I spoke to him earlier. Yeah. He did tell me how to say it. <laughs> <laughs> That's a problem. Oh no, I've got a long way ahead. How many people are in this event? Yeah. 100 of them. 120 men, 30 women, a lot of new names. <laughs> yeah, you got the pronunciations right of, uh, of the guys you know. and. Uh, <laughs> It's a work in progress. Machinsky, I'm happy about that one. Uh, it's right in second. Third place, we're not going to quite see him, but it was Jutzen last time we looked. Looking pretty solid from uh, Denmark. We've got the Brit up there as well, Matthew Barton in fifth place. And then 628 from France, who's that? Uh, 
That's Lewis Pingard. Lewis. Pin. Pignard. Pignard. Oh, no. <laughs> Am I going to put the French accent on for the commentary? It's the only way to do it. Uh, Michinski, though, is going to win this one and he's, he's going to go pushed. into the he's final. He is. He's been pushed hard as well. He's again a good race. That's what we're going to see. Plenty of that type of action on these last reaches as they cross the finish line. So the top two, France 7, Adrian Nestra, uh, Minch uh, Jutsen from Denmark, followed by Pazanaza. Pianazaza? Pazaza Pazaza Pazaza. <laughs> I'm going to give them all nicknames. Don't you worry. Don't you worry. They're all getting nicknames from me. Uh, Barton, Matthew Barton from the UK qualifies. Good race from him. Uh, and and Pignoir. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go around the beach, don't worry. I'm going to work out these people. So we should be going into the women's qualifying next. No, finals. Women's finals. Women's finals, straight in. And you've got to say, we're going to go women's finals next. There's going to be one standout. She won her qualifying heat. She smashed the Formula Foil last week. Elena Noisman. Killing it. Well, Literally <laughs> killing it. I think uh, uh, you'd be a fool to put any money in it uh, any other way at this stage. Uh, she's she's, uh, she's set the pace of the week and, uh, and certainly comfortable on the floor. Yeah, if I was going to bet on any woman in the slalom this week and even in, the, in everything, she has just looked in dominant form. France 57, Helena Noisman. So watch out for her. You've got to think uh, Lillian de Hoos is going to be up there as well. Uh, Marina Alabao, that's the big news, is not in the final. Uh, went the wrong way. Blanca Alibaba though looked like she was challenging and she's going to be a force to be reckoned with no doubt about it uh, who else have we got Maya uh, Dizanowska from Poland she was looking good in the Formula Foil so I would put her to be up there Esther de Cus as well Lillian's uh, twin sister yeah, that's pretty cool we've got some sisters racing in, in this game here and it's certainly bring a lot to the sport uh, we've got Hella Oppendahl as well from and, uh, Norway. Uh, I've seen her a few times on the PWA, so I'd expect her to maybe up there and uh, challenging. So we'll just have to see how it pans out here. Let's hope we don't get any uh, PMSs and we keep it nice and clean. Um, must be super interesting to see, I mean, how much this fleet is going to grow. It's probably going to grow. <laughs> For want of a better word, massive. I, <laughs> I can see it being massive. This is the tip of the iceberg, and uh, when these sailors go back home, and they're going to spread the word of, of, of what this foil racing is like. What you know? As I said before, it's a meeting of the classes. We've got a lot of friends in the sport. We all share the same love of the sport, and we're on this Olympic journey right now. And hey, I said it before. Also, it's not for everybody, but. Um, it's the people. It's yeah. the people that make it. And the more the merrier. Well, Yellow there's only one man or one woman that can win a gold medal. That's the problem. There's only three medals. Yeah, they don't give them away very often. <laughs> uh, and they're hard, they're hard won. And uh, every four years, or well, every five years right now. Yeah, just a good point. What is happening with the Olympics? That's a very good point. Because uh, you got the inside knowledge. What's the talk? Oh, Alan God, we're going to go straight into this final. So hold that thought, uh, Mr. McIntosh. Um, we are going up to the women's final. This is the first ever final of uh, the IQ foil. And we're kicking off with slalom. Um, crazy. Helena Noisman, she is going to be one to watch. Uh, we've got to look at Lillian de Hoos. You've got to, no doubt about it. Uh, the Nowska from Poland. I would keep your eyes on her as well. Uh, but has she had a good start? I'm just looking. Pole seven we're looking out for. Expect to see her right up in the mix. Helena, a small lead there, but uh, also being challenged by uh, Blanca Alabao at the moment. Blanca Alabao's got some speed, hasn't she? She's got the Spanish flag on the sail. Obviously, her sister, uh, Marina Alabao, didn't make the final after going the wrong way. And it looks like that could be Helena Noisman, who's just been powering through the pack and gone out into the lead. She wasn't leading off the start, but she is now. So, Helena Noisman followed by Blanca Alabao. Then we've got uh, Hella Oppendahl in there. We've got uh, the Dutch rider. Did I see Dutch? 33 in there. Did I see it? I don't yeah, know. Yeah, Sarah Winnikers, uh, Winnikers, uh, Lillian yeah. de Goose uh, uh, up there, and, and also her sister Esther. So a lot of Dutch flags in there this heat. Yeah, they are all oh, having it. Uh, Esther de Goose, obviously, uh, which is Lillian's uh, twin sister, have done a quite a few Peterway slalons before. Youngest, uh, youngest sister, two, young, two minutes. Oh, up, two up. minutes. 
<laughs> good to know good to know but out in the lead there's only one winner at the moment I just the way she was racing last week this is not a surprise for me um, this is France 57 Helena Noisman destroying the field once again with some just devastating board speed second place Blanca Alabao third place a wide jibe in third is that gonna cost her doesn't look like it is that Lillian de Goose? That's Lillian de Goose. Yeah, we've got the uh, Sarah Chile. Winnikers. Sarah Winnikers, and then we've got pole seven, which is uh, Dionoska from Poland. Super close rating in this women's fleet. Uh, the Israel two, uh, Peleg Junior as well. So uh, that's six se under seventeens. That's correct. So uh, keep your eye on her, Daniela Peleg uh, from Israel. Just saw a glimpse of that Israeli. Uh, country flag so we will have to keep an eye on it Poland though look at Donovska coming through she's putting in some good speed coming into this uh, second well penultimate jibe mark but out in the lead um, well actually out in the lead it must be off our screens Helena Noisman must have already gone past she's going that quick because I'm pretty sure that's Blanca Alabao we've got on your screens right now expect to see Noisman there she is already going out the jibe clean away Blanca Alabao needs to keep it together good jibe from Blanca then we've got Donoska oh going inside going inside oh it's Lillian de Roos on the inside with a great jibe and that is uh, Winnikers coming through and Esther de Roos and the Israeli uh, so with Peleg all in the mix here she's close racing it's tight you know it's tight we're playing we've got 20 20 person heat or 20 woman heats there they're big fleets for slalom but you know everybody's getting around comfortable that's pretty impressive to see in this early stage of the sport well so far I have not mentioned Lena Erdl you know one of the PWA great slalom racers uh, they've got slalom foiling on the case I was expecting to see her up there but at the moment I don't think she had the best start because she is in the pack one person who is not in the pack is this woman she I think she'll get scared if she ever gets in the pack she's been so far ahead she has absolutely got I mean rockets on uh, Helena Noisman destroying it right once again out in front second place Blanca Alabao third place Lillian de Roos that's your top three fourth place is that no that's the Polish rider that is the Donovska and uh, the Israeli coming through with a lovely jibe on the inside Peleg that's going to be a very close battle between the Polish rider and the Israeli so keep your eye on that battle if you can but out in front Helena Noisman is just showing what speed she has got she's an RSX racer she was always good in the strong winds I've heard but it looks like she's found her discipline looks looks behind her and goes well <laughs> where yeah. is everybody sailing around with the fingers and the nose um impressive beautiful you know if First I was race. the other girls I'd say come back and fight you know that's not fair <laughs> Are they well, really on the same gear? Well, the first race of the IQ foil goes to Elena Noisman. Great result for Elena. Second place, Blanca Alabao. Really good result for Blanca in second. Third place, Lillian de Cruz. Who's going to get fourth? It's going to be the Israeli. Pele gets it. With that inside jibe on the last one, just squeezing out uh, Donovska from Poland. Oh, big crash there. Who went down? Oh, that did well to avoid oh that's a disaster in the final right so close, on the but thing so far oh i'm just looking to see who it is gutted you're going to be absolutely gutted it's one of the israeli riders oh drihan i think yeah that looks like oh, she'll noi. be a little disappointed she's been looking good oh no not, that, not annoy you. Place. that would annoy you <laughs> oh no right um i think we're gonna go up to the men's final next i think that's where we're going yeah men's final so we're gonna go just to explain it we're gonna have yellow final and then men's blue final and i think that's where we're cutting the commentary that's uh I'm waiting for the word in my ear because i know we're, we're tight on time with this type of schedule we're running here in uh, switzerland so i think we're just going to run the two finals so if you have any you know um people you're following in the bc finals you're going to have to look at the results because we are just going to stream the two winners finals all those result results are on uh, on the i4 class.org um entry lists uh, results lists heat heats um, and I think there's a great selection of photos uh, from Jesus from uh, Sailing Energy. So um, a lot happening. Um, check them out on Facebook and, uh, and also what's going on the Ingen and Wind uh, Surf uh, Festival that's going on here.
Okay, so okay, we, coming uh, up in to, this uh, final, um, we'll You're have to just check to see no how um, the scoreboard's looking. I know Sebastian Kirdle is in this final. I'm out of Reesvike, I remember. Thomas Goya, Steve Allen. These are names I remember, obviously, from my PWA background. It's much easier for me to remember the PWA riders uh, than the other ones. Tom Squires, because I know he's from the UK. And we're already starting. Here we go. The first final for the IQ foil is up and running. Who have we got, Aaron? Can you pick out anyone? How hard is oh, that? Oh, the drone shot's just a little far out at this stage, but uh, Amato Reesvike looking pretty solid there, setting into windward. You can see how, how his rig's raked over to windward. He's solid and smooth through the water. Small advantage. Well, we'll have to see. I expect Curdle to be up there. I know he is absolute beast uh, when it comes to it. Um, who else have we got in there? Uh, the Italian Bruno Martini, Amato Reesvike, you mentioned him as well. See if we can get the other shot coming around this mark to pick them out. Oh, it's so difficult. Well, I can't see. A of Reesvike, I think, is there. Kirdle is there. There we go. Swiss riders in there. No, this. Hang on. Still a lot going Maxim, down there. There's, there's a lot of action here. Massive pileup on the first mark. We couldn't quite see um, who was round. I know Renner was up in the qualifying. Max Beeman was up in the qualifying. So we Tom Squires as well. So hopefully we get the other angle just uh, to I see who is that, there. Thomas Goya must be up in the mix. I think that was a matter of Israel that went round. Such a good start and went down first drive. There's a lot, of, a lot going on right now. Here we go. Outside drive mark. That looks like to me Curdle. Yeah, it's the big German, uh, Sebastian Kirtle out in the lead. Second place, Amado Vries. Like, oh, he's put his foot round. He has stepped out. So that is a, not a good jibe for Amado Vries. Like, and he's let two people on the inside. Looks like Bruno Martini okay, and Thomas Goya has gone on the that. inside of Amado Vries. Like, and that five. could be a costly mistake. He just tapped the nose down, stepped forward and saved it, which, to be fair, is not easy to do. But he has cost himself a couple of places, and that was not good. But if anyone can get in the back, Amato Vriesweig, you can see going low. We've got the Italian Bruno Martini uh, in second place. Third place looks like Thomas Goya. And out in front, it's Sebastian Kirdle with a nice looking lead. The big German uh, has been training quite a lot on the IQ foil. I know he's been trying to get on the German Olympic team, which I think he's secured. He's quite keen to be first German every time we hear about it. Yeah, it's no, first German now, that's for sure. It's uh, certainly a battle, battle with the Germans. And, uh, you know, there's a, a strong team. And they haven't been in Olympic windsurfing for, for the last four years uh, since uh, Tony Willem uh, retired after Rio. So um, this is the great thing, the foil class. We've got a lot of people coming back into the class, a lot of countries that have been missing for a while. So uh, first German. Well, it looks good. I think that was Tom Squires, was it, up there? Um, like I say, just trying to look down the list to see who it could be. I think it was the Brits. Nice to see a British flag up there. Um, but out in the front, it's Sebastian Kirtle in first. Second place looks like Bruno Martini. Third place, uh, Thomas Goya last time we saw. Then we had Amaro Vriesweik. Uh, and then it looked like Tom Squires from the UK. Uh, and then the sixth place rider, it looked like the Spanish okay, rider so Fernando. But we'll have to five, get confirmation of this when we go around this last giant mark. And will he hold on here? Sebastian Kirtle, no doubt about it. Solid jibe from the big German. Second place is uh, Bruno Martini from Italy. One of the fittest riders on the PWA Tour, no doubt about it. He's a beast, that bloke. Uh, third place, Thomas Goya from France. Not the biggest fella in between Amado Vriesweik and Bruno Martini. I mean, it just goes to show the different sizes we've got competing against each other and being competitive in this new class. Well, right now, we don't know what the ideal weight is, and we're seeing a, a big range of, of body weights and, and abilities right now. So, hey, meeting of the classes. Meeting of the classes. So, who is going to win the first IQ foil slalom of 2020, or in fact, Ever. It's going to be the old big German, as we know him, Sebastian Kernel takes the first one. Uh, second place will be the big Italian, <laughs> Bruno uh, Martini. And then we've got the small French bloke, <laughs> Thomas Goya, followed by the big uh, Bonarian with a New Zealand flag on his tail. Um, it's uh, going to be Amado Vriesweik. Fifth place is going to be the Brit, Tom Squires. I'm not quite sure who's going to get sixth place. It looks like the Spanish rider Fernando gets that all important. Well, not all important sixth place because this is the final. So they all count now um, and they'll all be better. 
so it's a great up. way that's a great way to start the regatta you know right now early on the regatta punch the numbers and keep yeah. them low you're not going to win the regatta on the first day but you can certainly lose it that is a well-known saying and a very apt one because it is so so true um you can't win it on the first day but you can give yourself a mountain to climb when you've got that discard hanging over you the whole race although i have seen people do it and it does make for some pretty nerve-wracking racing well sometimes it's nice to get the discard out early so you can actually get on and focus with the job um, certainly, <laughs> way to look at it. <laughs> certainly not the best way to look at it but um, hey you got to deal with it you can't cry over spilled milk <laughs> all right we've got the next uh, the second final which is the last final so if you have just joined in we have two finals uh, we have two B finals this, yes this two A finals two B finals two C finals that right? that's correct and that gets us through 120 men for the day it's a lot of people in this slalom that's why they have to do it like that and what it does is it devalues the winning slalom sort of by half because you've got two first two seconds yes two thirds. but we want to do that because well well we have got a course race that takes to 12 to 18 that's minutes it. That's and it. we've got a slalom race that takes about three minutes so uh you know we can't you know, we've got to sort of spread the load and i come back to the marathon double points so you know the longer race should be valued more Okay, I was just thinking, does it devalue it? Does it make it better? No, it makes it better. Well, because it got, takes so long to do it. I'm, I'm new to this, just bear with me here. I'm literally talking through it, my mind on the on the live stream, which is never a good idea. <laughs> you doing a good job, mate. You're doing a good job. <laughs> so we'll see. I'm working out, don't worry. But basically, there be, will be two first places in the men, two second places, two thirds. So this is to find out who will win the second final. So in this, the top runner has to be Matt Chepikovsky. He has to be the top seed. He's looked in good form. He's been podium nearly every competition he's done this year, apart from the Formula Foil, which came down to a protest and he could have been on the silver medal. So he is in really good form at the moment. Um, who else have we got? We got Mateus Isaac, the Brazilian. He didn't do so well in the Formula Foil. He was super disappointed, but I was in Portugal with him. I seen him train in the slalom, which is what he's been pushing, and he looks fast man he looks so comfortable with the slalom it's definitely more his discipline um who else have we got in steve van brockhoven we've got in this uh we've got bloodworth from the uk he was looking pretty good uh we got matthew barton from the uk also looking good adrian menst uh, Menstra, Menst uh we saw him and here we go straight in with a star here we go and they are all on the line and there's oh there's a real tight bunch someone down the pin end looked like they were sticking out you never want to stick out unless you're on so it's a good start no, it's a good start there. Just need to see who it is. Looks like it could be Matchet Rakoski with the best start. So Matchet Rakoski with the best start. And we are going down the reach. So he, as I told you, he was one to watch, Aaron. He is going to be one to watch. But hang on a minute. What's going on here? I don't look to be going as fast as... Uh, I think we've got a general recall. I think we've got a general recall. And that could be bad news for the Polish rider push 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 got to push how many if you if you want to win it you got to push so you can see the winners they push well what are you going to do you're going to take a second row <laughs> miss the qualification you know and this is the art of the training it's time on distance and it's perfection uh nail the start big first jibe you got the race in the bag yeah. making no mistakes going forward so uh well we'll wait and see who it is but by my beady little eyes here that looked like Matchet Rakowski with the best start we've gotten over early I would call he's got to be at least one of them that was over they looked like it was a little bunch but he was just sticking out you know you see everybody stacked down at that pin end of the line so there's obviously a little bit of bias that's the shortest distance to the first mark and you get a big group and everybody's pushing everybody's pushing to hit that line yeah, yeah, right on the money and you know, half a second that's yeah. uh that's four meters <laughs> exactly we're trying to work it out we're gonna to have to get good at math by the end of this live stream well we'll start to understand the vmg and the polars of these guys soon so uh you know a lot to learn and uh hey 
Isn't it day one, right? It's day one, it's day one. I am new, Aaron's new, we're all new, uh, but it's all good, we're all new together. Because uh, if you are just joining in, ch tuning in, this is the IQ foil class. It's the new windsurfing Olympic discipline. Um, it's a nine meter setup for the men, an eight meter setup for the women, 95 wide board, both for the men and women, or different That's boards? The same board, same, same foil. Board, same foil, same board. You can alter the back wing, I think, because of the slalom and the upwind just to yep there's five different shims that it comes in so that uh, allows you to tune for your body weight and the course configuration as well so um i don't know what everybody anybody's using right now but uh there's certainly a lot of playing going on um as, as guys start to kind of get a feel for what they want and the feeling they want you know um, interesting it, stuff oh, it's new interesting stuff i mean interesting stuff i can only see this getting bigger and better um the, the, in theory the class should be open up to other manufacturers to bring out the gear but there's a lot of other stuff in between them doing that because obviously it has to be the same so it probably has to be built in the same factory i would guess well i don't know how this works that's just it you know production tolerances there are differences with equipment in different yeah. manufacturers you have the production tolerance and the different manufacturers doing it We've got to keep this class as tight as we can, so it's going to come down to sailor ability at the end of the day, and that's why we're sailing one design. Yeah. The PWA, it's uh, it's uh, manufacturer driven. Um, that's where all the development's going on. That's where this class has actually come from. Uh, it's been a development over the last sort of five years with Gonzalo Costa Holvel, Star Wars, Vern. That's a product of the development. Right now, we're going to stop that development, and we can have all the fun on the same year. Yeah. We don't need to to join the arms race and. Uh, I suppose that's the beauty of one design yeah and that is the beauty of one design we all know that it's it's never going to be exactly exactly the same but it's going to be pretty damn close i think it all comes down to how the sailor sets up the gear and understands it you know it's well, what we do know is no one's just going to turn up with a random foil that they've just built in the garage which is just this new thing that no one can compete with you know it's going to be pretty pretty simple I mean, that's the main thing about this class. You know, they don't want someone okay, turning up to the Olympics with some, you know, I don't know, futuristic like foil like set up and it, they're keeping it a, a secret for the last two years and then they just win every race. That's what it's to stop, I guess. Well, it, it comes down to the athleticism of the sport and our, of the athlete. We don't want to have this, you know, the, the big nations with a lot of money uh, that can invest in development. We've okay. just got to stop that, you know, yeah. and the beauty is is you can just go and buy this gear off the shelf yeah no, it's good to see I mean I just listened to a, a Kevin Pritchard podcast and he was talking about the time when he beat Bjorn Dunkerbeck and he said that year which I guess is 2000 he said that his gear was untouchable he could start below him okay, above him around him he was just rolling yeah, everyone and he just knew that this is going to be my year I'm going to do it well, you so gotta, you got to put the time in yeah but you've got it you've got to develop the gear and again this is why this class as uh, is, is here now because of all that development uh, and we're at a very really solid place and just looking out there waiting for this final i'm really looking forward to seeing who is going to win it and we have just heard it was matchek rakowski who was over the line early you, you called it ben you uh, called it I, I just i just had this feeling aaron well He's been pushing hard all season, right? Today's the day he pushed a little too hard. Yeah, it's, uh, I just, like I said, I saw him sticking out there and I thought, I bet you he's over. He's in it to win it. Like I said, he, but he's pushing. I'm laughing just because I know how hard he pushes. And it? It's just one of them things when you see it on camera, you just know it's coming. So we'll wait for that restart. I'm sure he'll have a, have a story to tell at the end of the day. He's always got a... Uh, a good a good explanation of how his racing's gone. He certainly explains it pretty well. He's uh, never controversial, our man, Matt Cherikovsky. We've got him doing the podcast on Windsurfing TV. He's doing a great job, but he's, he's as he self-confessed, windsurfing nerd. He loves to know everything and anything, stories, and he's part of half of them at the moment. He's had a few, uh, a few battles on the beach and a few battles on the war, I won't lie. Well, that's the characters, right? It's the characters that make the sport. The characters are sort of uh, um, you know, a little controversy, a little friendship, and uh, yeah. You got to mack and row it up. I mean, yeah, you got to mack and row it up. <laughs> throw, throw a few rackets around. Exactly. Let's kind of keep those foils in the foil bag right there. Look sharp, a little, a yeah, little they're dangerous. Yeah, they're a bit sharper than a tennis racket. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're well, waiting. It looks like we're in the sequence there, but um. Yeah, we, quiet there. we don't have the radio 
coming through at the moment, but it can't be long now until the start. So less than two minutes to go until the start. I think they'll probably get a couple of races in today. Yeah, the conditions look good. You know, the last uh, couple of days the breeze has been marginal. Um, we've struggled. Uh, we had uh, we had a storm uh, go over the top of us. The strong easterlies. It looked like we could race, and um, but the conditions are too variable on the water. So uh, unfortunately, we didn't get away yesterday. Um, and the sailors been itching. So uh, really, really, really stoked to see the guys. The sun's out that uh, southwesterly is blowing uh, the thermal down the valley. Oh, here we go. We're already lining up for this start. We've already had one men's final. Uh, Sebastian Curdle winning it, and he has looked in really good form. It wouldn't surprise me if he won a couple today. He's looked really good. Well, you know, you, you oh, here we go. Anyway. We're on. We're on. Sorry, Al. We're on. We're on. Let's see how we go. We're gonna. Who have we got in this? Uh, Alexander Kuzan. Expect him to be up there. We've got uh, Bichinski in this. We've got Mateo Yakino in this as well. Expect him to. Mateus Isaac. Um, who else have we got? Just looking down the list. Adrian Menst looking really good. Um, you'd expect Mateo Yakino. He's got to be in that leading pack, surely. Let's have a look, see if we can spot him out. Is that an Italian sale number? I think it is. Oh, it's a general oh, recall again. Recall. We're just hearing. Oh. Potentially going to lose another competitor there. You know, that's what happens in the black flag situation here. If someone's over, they're going to cause uh, the sailors around them to be disadvantaged. We bring them back, get rid of the guy who's black flag, and restart. So, um, yeah, the fleet gets smaller. Okay, so uh, we have a little bit more waiting around here. We have a little bit more waiting around. So let's see, this will be the last uh, heat we stream today. Obviously there will be more racing today. Uh, there will be more action. Uh, we'll be bringing you the updates obviously tomorrow. Um, we're trying to get a bit of an idea of the deal with the live stream here. We know we have to go live at three, which with windsurfing is not that easy because you've obviously got to go with the conditions, but yeah, how do you turn it on? How do you turn the breeze on? Three o'clock, you want breeze? Yeah. Well, we don't quite have that control. There was a plan that we might pre-record the live stream and then play it out at three. Okay, that, that could work. That, that could work. That could definitely work. I think that might be a way we do it. <laughs> that could be a way. Could be a way. Okay, here we go. Good start. There's still good breeze out there, but I noticed there's a... Um, there's a few clouds coming over. It is cold when the breeze, uh, when the clouds do come over. Um, we're dealing with a lot of mountain air here, and um, yeah, a little bit spotty on the water at times. So there is, uh, there's some small gains to be made by hitting those gusts just right. Right, let's so have a look. Just looking who's in this. We've got Alexander Kuzan, like I said, Mateo Yakino, uh, Mateus Isaac. Um, Matthew Barton from the UK was looking good in the other one. Um, Daniel Luis Schick from Italy. Slick. Yeah, maybe. Uh, Matteo Benz. Tom Arnu. Uh, Minsky. Uh, sorry, I keep wanting to say his old nickname, but uh, Michinsky, I should say. Jutsen was looking good, wasn't he? So uh, they're all coming up in this. Obviously, we've lost Maciek Rakowski. I've just heard that it wasn't a, a general recall. It was some problem with the timing. Okay, um, so, so we won't be losing yeah, anybody um, this time round. Well, that's good to know. Good to know. And so they are just going to restart it. So we'll have to wait and see. So hopefully that will be a nice and quick restart. Who do you want to call for this one, Aaron? Oh, jeez. You know, there's too many players, and the game is so tight, and the margins of error are so small. One slip up, you're out the back. Yeah, for sure. Maczynski has looked good though, the Polish rider. But and like I say, you never know. Obviously, the PLA boys for me, in these conditions that we've got here with the foil uh, slalom, are gonna probably get the edge. Yeah, they're probably bigger riders and they've had more time practicing well that, that's just it right they've been developing this foil slalom gear for the last you know six to eight months uh once they made the decision last year it was foil slalom um yori bonk was out here the other day i heard some numbers 31 6 10 second averages absolutely blazing in front of us clean tides tidy smooth and um 
It's happening. It's, it's happening. happening. It's, it's happening. happening. It's happening. Versus foil. Foil's coming fast. Yeah. It, it is. It is. If you've not got on a foil yet, and you're one of those haters out there, you wait till you try it. You wait till you try it and just master it to a certain level. It will change your sailing. It's not to say the fin is out. It's not. I love fin sailing, that connection with the water. But there's definitely a massive place for the foil and in certain locations it's taking over i mean it's well it's just the simple ability to sail in less wind and get more performance and uh okay here we go Last funny thing is i didn't windsurf for 16 years I did a lot of other things a lot of coaching america's cup tornado class and i just brought the gear never tried it just brought the gear went to the shop Guy brought the foil. Have you got a board, Aaron? No, I need a board. Have you got a rig, Aaron? No, I need a rig. I went from the shop to the beach. I sailed till dark. Absolutely shattered. Adrenaline pumping. Nice, sustained flight. And I was pretty rusty. Yeah. Took some big diggers to start with. I wasn't comfortable with the setup. But it's that hook, that first flight. I, I haven't turned back two and a half years, still foiling and trying to mix it with the young guys uh well not okay. on racing <laughs> i'm a yeah, trainer but it's, i'm a trainer not a racer it's true isn't it it's a feeling thing and i i can only say the same with the wing everyone slagged it off but the feel of it is how you have to try it and that is the same with foiling it's a feeling it's pretty crazy um so it hopefully should be going pretty soon some big peel away boys um, i think they're on the roll today I think it comes down to experience. We might uh got a little bit of waiting going on here, sorry guys, and you got to listen to Ben and I. Oh, we've been around the game a bit. We've got a few stories to tell, a little bit of experience, but um you know, it is the nature of of sailing. Uh, we can't control the breeze, uh, and sometimes there are little delays on the bottom. They get a bit eager to sail, I think that's the bloody bigger problem. So hopefully, come on boys, keep behind the line. Um, oh, here we go. No, we don't go. No, we're not going just yet. <laughs> hopefully we should be going soon. There's a few comments coming through. Uh, what's the wind doing right now? Well, it looks, I mean, it's dropped a little bit from what it was earlier, but uh, pretty solid still, um, I, I guess, between mid-teens. Yeah, it's definitely softened. I think, you know, we've probably seen 13 knots, 14 knots max, but you're probably seeing down to 10 knots in the lull. So, uh, that's, is that going to help the younger sailors? Is that going to help the lighter sailors? Let's see. Yeah, let's see. Uh, we've, like I say, we've got this final coming right, up, so the blue final. So, where is the blue final? Come on, boys. We've lost Matt Cherikovsky to a PMS, but I'm sure he's going to come back strong today. I'm sure we're going to do more races. Uh, it just means he's burnt his probably discard already if he's going to if he's going to go on to maybe try and secure a podium at this event. I mean, you're not going to be able to count uh, last in the final. Look at that as a discard. Well, that's just it. That's a, that's a, that's a 20th place. Yeah. Um, so, you know, let's hope that we get enough races through. Uh, there will be a discard. There's a qualification, final series. And, well, it, it won't be Super Sunday, but it'll be on Wednesday. But we talk <laughs> about the Super Sunday format. Uh, big Wednesday? Yeah, Big Wednesday, Super Sunday. Um, what it is, is a compact, uh, zero points carried forward to the final day. Um, so, technically, this is qualification, but you've got to make the top 12 for the final day. Okay, so that's how it is. We're going all in, top 12, get separated. Zero points, you know. You know what it's going to feel like on the last day? You're going to walk around the boat park and, and you know, there's going to be an energy there. Everybody's in it to win it. Yeah. You know? Not what we've seen in the past where you've had the whole regatta the whole week. Um, and that's the beauty of this new sport. We're showcasing it. Um, it's a little bit like 100 meters, right? Yeah. It's a 10 second race. Well, we're not a 10 second race, but we're compressing the format where you've got to make the 12 man final. And once you're in, you've got a chance. To so let me get this right. We're qualifying all week, pretty much. Top 12 all get started from scratch, like a new competition. So That's this right. is all qualifying, literally. Top 12. And then what do we do? One race. Uh, there's going to be three races. Three races. That's going to be crazy. Um, I'm looking forward to that. It's That's short, sharp, intense racing. You know, it's a new sport. 
Um, and we're we're changing the face of, of how windsurfing is perceived, and and, and how we we'll showcase it to the people on on the street and, and the fans of windsurfing and wind fire. Okay, so you heard it here, right? Get on the YouTube channel, leave us your comments. What do you think of that? We're qualifying all week. Well, I say all week. We've only got a couple well, of days left. We've got tomorrow and uh, and Wednesday. So Tuesday, qualifying Wednesday. today and tomorrow, and then on Wednesday, the top 12 will go head to head. They all start on zero points. We'll have three races, winner takes all. That's Literally. right. And everybody else that didn't make the top 10 will continue uh, and have, have other racing for the day as well. So, you know, it's a five days rate, five days of racing. Well, it's going to end up three days because we lost the first day. And, uh, and yesterday's uh, sort of unsaleable easterly direction. Um, Okay, I'm pretty excited. We should be getting in close now, shouldn't we, to the start of this? They looks like they're, they're just... Down, black flags up, we're into the sequence. Okay, so not long to go till we kick off this uh, second men's winner's final. Maciek Rakowski has already been PMS'd. And we've got Stephen Van Brock over in this, uh, Edward Bloodworth. We've got Alexander Kuzan, uh, Michinski, Yakino. Arnu, Benz, Isaac, Barton, Menstra, uh, Silk. Uh, there's a there's a lot of guys in this. I'm not going to mention them all. Jutsen as well was a standout in the last round. So we'll have to see who comes to the front in this race. Like I said, for me, it's very difficult to bet against the Peterway boys. But if I was going to bet against the Peterway boys, Michinski would be one I might put a bit of uh, cash on. He looked good in the qualifying. I think he won his qualifying uh, round. I guess. I'll have another look now, but uh, he's been looking pretty solid. And can't find my uh, can't find me bit of paper now, can I? It's typical. Oh yeah, Machinski he did. He won his uh, he won his qualifying round. So, well, it's really interesting. Formula foil, upwind, downwind racing. This first day of the IQ foil Europeans, straight into court, uh, straight into the slalom. So, these guys, they've got a skill set. Yeah. Uh, they adapt to the new the new courses, different courses, and um, that's what it has to be. Yeah. Oh, that's man. the beauty of what the IQ foil class is. We've got races for the media the slalom racing races for the sailors the course racing and the marathon which actually really ticks the boxes for the local towns yeah you know i'm going to put a question out there so you've just heard me talk about the format oh hello are we starting here it looks like a start doesn't it that looks like a start to me yes we're up and running sorry you didn't hear that over the radio but we are up and running there's an italian flag up there a brazilian flag for mateus isaac there's a french flag in the mix as well uh, they're all going, all going. So the French flag, who's okay, that going to be? So Who do we have? Menstra looked really good in the last one. It could be him, France 7. I think it is, yes. France 7 right up there. Matteo Iacchino. We've got France 56, Brazilian 7 as well. All in the mix. Where is Michinski? I don't see him. So Kuzan, yeah, Kuzan's in the mix. So Iacchino. Matteo Isaac on the inside. Kuzan on this outside bit. by Menstra. Got one of the Brits in there. It could be Matthew Barton. Look at Matteo Iacchino. He's got some devastating board speed. You can just see why that guy is in that just solid top three on the PWA. Uh, and he has been training hard on the slalom, uh, the foil slalom. And there we go. Matteo Isaac just put in a little number on uh, Alexander Kuzan. Kuzan trying to go lower than him. And he just decided, no, not having that. Just going to squeeze him down and then tight that inside uh, line. But that could prove a little bit tricky coming around this giant mark because you might see Kuzan try and get inside him but Mateus has given himself enough room to close the door so Mateus uh, is still in second oh that was Michinski that's gone down he was in third place but the Polish rider is in the drink Matthew Barton coming through uh, we've got uh, Mestre coming through oh Michinski is going to be gutted yeah that's him that's his final over Mateus Isaac though looking very solid out in the front Mateus um, Mateo, sorry, Isaac, and Mateus. <laughs> I get them all mixed up. They all go into one. Mateo Iacchino and Mateus Isaac in second. There we go. He's just sailed away there, from the these guys here. You know, that first big jibe. And, uh, yeah, he's just sailing out of camera shot. Yeah. Um, 
looking solid, isn't he? Matteo Iacchino. Stable on the board. Solid as a rock round the jibe mark. Matthias Isaac from Brazil. Solid in second. Third place, Alexander Kuzan. Then we have Menst. Then we have Matthew Barton. Good rounding from him. And then we've got uh, the Italian. And then I think that was Stephen Van Brockhoven. Uh, Bloodworth in there as well. And then just French riders everywhere. There's a lot of French in there. There's a lot of French out on the race course. They've got a very solid uh, program over in France. Lots of sailing clubs pushing the Olympic sailing and uh, it definitely shows when you see the results. But out in the front, we've got an Italian rider, Matteo Iacchino, vice world champion from the PWA, uh, looking very, very solid. He won actually the last, well, in the last two races of the Formula 4, he got a first and a second. So he's definitely found form later in the week here in Switzerland. And he looks like he's going to win this final quite comfortably on the first day of actual action for the IQ foil new Olympic discipline. Second place, Mateus uh, Isaac looks solid. Yakino out in the lead. So Yakino Isaac, third place, got to be Alexander Kuzan. Or is it? Is that Mens? No, Mens is in uh, fourth place, fighting out with Barton from the UK. Really good battles uh, going on here in Silver Planet in Switzerland for the Venora Ingen and Wind uh, brought to you by Dekine. Got a good style actually, France number seven. Gonna see probably more of him, but we're gonna see more of this guy. Matteo Iacchino uh, takes his first final on the IQ foil and that's gonna feel pretty good winning the first one. Uh, Matthias Isaac as well, that's gonna feel good for him because he had a shocker in the, in the world's in the upwind downwind he didn't look happy but that's more where we're used to seeing him uh, Matthias Isaac gets uh, second third place Alexander Kuzan and uh, fourth place is going to be uh, Menstra and then we've got uh, Matthew Barton and then the Spanish rider in six no it's going to be the Belgium Stephen Van Brockhoven solid week he's been Whoa. Uh, he's been messing around flipping around he's been in the foil style and the freestyle towing. He's been uh, busy, hasn't he? He has been busy. I talked to him earlier in the week and he said he wasn't going to do the Formula Foil. It was just too busy for him and they uh, just want to focus on the IQ4. So uh, really nice to see, uh, you know, look at the range of sailors out here. Freestylers, free foilers, uh, RSX sailors, uh, the youth, the junior and the PWA kings at the moment. Um, that's what we're seeing today. It is First blood to today. the PWA sailors. Okay, so there you go. That is it for our live coverage. There will be action during the day. I hope you've enjoyed seeing the first ever IQ foil action, and it was on the slalom course. Obviously, leading the way in the women, Helena Noisman, absolutely destroying the field, and uh, we're going to be seeing a lot of her, uh, especially in this foiling discipline so far. She's been dominating. Um, in the men, um, well, Cordle, Curdle, Curdle, the big German was looking good and obviously if we've just seen now, Yakino. We've obviously got more races, there's more riders in the mix. If you want to stay up to date with the results, check out the website, it all will be up there and we'll be back tomorrow to bring you all the news from what else happened today and bring you tomorrow's action. Thanks a lot for Aaron McIntosh for joining me. Cheers Thanks, Aaron. Uh, we'll see you soon.